Hi, I am Dr. Sakib, and this is my channel, Learning Anatomy. So today I will talk about uh, the infratemporal fossa. So here you see, uh, this is the you know temporal surface, and this is uh, the zygomatic arch. So let's go to the fossa, infratemporal fossa. So shape of this fossa is irregular. So it is placed deep and inferior to the zygomatic arch. It is the zygomatic arch and the fossa is placed deep and inferior to that. So uh, deep to the ramus of the mandible as well. This is the ramus of the mandible. It is deep to the, that as well. And posterior to maxilla. This is maxilla and it is lying posterior to that. So here you can see another picture. This is, you know, this is the infratemporal crest and above uh, this is, a, of course, the spoon is a sphenoid and this is the uh, sphenoid uh, uh, temporal surface and below the infratemporal crest is the infratemporal past of part of the uh, sphenoid bone. So you could see this going on the boundaries of the infratemporal fossa. So with the boundaries. So first of all, we'll divide it uh, into headings of the boundaries and the contents of the fossa and uh, then the relationships of the structures present in the fossa and the bones involved in formation of the fossa. First of all, the boundaries. So laterally is the ramus of the mandible. Here you could see this is the ramus of the mandible, the lateral boundary, right? And medially is a lateral pterygoid plate. Let's so show you in a zoom in here. This is the plate. This is, you could see, this is the lateral pterygoid plate. Here you go, right? This part of the, of course, pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone, pterygoid plate. So then uh, you see is the um, anterior poly, it is the posterior aspect of the maxilla, right? As you go anterior, this is, uh, uh, you know, maxilla bone is this. So this is here lying the fossa. This is the posterior part of the maxilla. And then you go, um, is uh, posteriorly is lying the tympanic plate and the mastoid and striolite process of the temporal bone. And you could see again, this is the posterior, this is the tympanic plate, and this is the mastoid process of the temporal bone. And here you could see this is the stylet process of the temporal bone. This is also the spine of the sphenoid here, you can see this. And superiorly is the inferior or the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid, right? So superiorly or the roof is a, right? This is the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid over here. And inferiorly where the medial pterygoid muscle attaches to the mandible near its angle. You could see there are various uh, uh, structures there focus, focused over here. This is the infratemporal fossa here in this. And you can see the communication of the temporal fossa with the infratemporal fossa. This is a, a more communications to come. This was the one communication of the temporal fossa already showed you superiorly deep to the zygomatic arch and it communicates anteriorly through inferior orbital fissure. Here you can see this is inferior orbital fissure. So let me enlarge. Here you could see this is the anterior communication with the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. And uh, then it communicates with the pterygopalatine fossa medially through the pterygomaxillary fissure. You could see, yes, it is the pterygomaxillary fissure, right? It communicates from here to the, uh, this uh, pterygopalatine fossa. And uh, through the middle cranial fossa, through the foramen of ale and spinosum. Of course, these are present in the sphenoid bone as well, in the roof uh, with the middle cranial fossa. And uh, this is the foramen spinosum. This is lying here. So the contents of the infratemporal fossa, first of all, you could see here, this is the inferior part of the temporalis muscle. That is the lateral and the medial pterygoid muscles. These are the two heads of the lateral pterygoid. And these are the two heads of the medial pterygoid muscles. And the pterygoid venous plexus, which is lying in the substance of the lateral pterygoid muscle. And there are various nerves, which is shown in the next picture and the maxillary artery over here, right? You could see, and uh, let me enlarge for you. 
showing the maxillary artery. You could see this is a maxillary artery, right? This is a maxillary artery. Yeah, this is a, you can see clearly, this is the maxillary artery here, lying here. And uh, then uh, this is, uh, again, you sh show you in this uh, picture, this is the inferior part of the temporalis. And this is, you know, two heads of the uh, lateral pterygoid muscle. And these are the two heads of the medial pterygoid muscles. And here are the nerves present in the fossa. First of all is the mandibular nerve itself, right? This is the mandibular nerve. Then is the lingual nerve, it's the lingual nerve. Then is the inferior alveolar nerve, inferior alveolar nerve. Then is a buccal nerve. Here you could see this is a buccal nerve. And also itself is the otic ganglion on medial side of the cranial nerve of nerve five, trigeminal nerve branch. Of course, this is the mandibular nerve. This is the otic ganglion optic ganglion and one nerve is on shown uh, which is a corda tympani nerve so the relations of the structures in the infratemporal fossa these are described in relation to the lateral pterygoid muscle which is the key to discuss relationships it lies in the roof of the fossa and runs anteroposteriorly in a rather horizontal plane from pterygoid plate to the mandibular condyle you could see this is the you see this is the lateral pterygoid two heads it's just running horizontal course here so this is the condyle of the mandible so mandibular nerve branches and the main origin of the medial pterygoid muscle lie deep to it and the maxillary artery lie superficial right so maxillary artery is lying superficial to it and the mandibular nerve branches and the main origin of the medial pterygoid muscle lie deep to it. This is the medial pterygoid. You see, this is the, uh, you know, deep to it lying there. Buccal nerve travels between the two heads of the lateral pterygoid. You can see these are two heads of the lateral pterygoid and this is the buccal nerve it's traveling between these two. This is the buccal nerve. This is between two, the two heads of the lateral pterygoid muscle. Then at its inferior border emerge medial pterygoid and inferior alveolar and lingual nerve. Here you go, these are the two nerves. First of all, you see inferior alveolar and this is the lingual nerve, right? At the lower border of the lateral pterygoids. Then also the medial pterygoid muscle. And at its upper border emerge deep temporal nerves and vessels. Right, this is the deep temporal vessels at its upper end. The pterygoid venous plexus lies around and within the lateral pterygoid, not shown here, but it is around and within its subsets. So, uh, this is a bones involved in formation of the infratemporal fossa. This is just uh, you know, see, you see maxillae at the uh, temporal bones, palatine bones, sphenoid bone, mandible, and an articulation of the, um, you know, temporal bones with the condyle of the mandible, which is a right and left temporomandibular joints. So we can, you see, uh, enlarge uh, the pictures here, here samely. So this is, let's I mean, zoom this, and here you, you see uh, enlarge for you, yes, right? So these are the four bones. First of all, you see this is the maxilla, this color, this is the maxilla. And uh, this blue small portion contributed with the palatine bone over here, this uh, bone, and this is the, you know, this is the sphenoid bone, and this is the zygomatic bone. These are the four bones, and of course here the mandible, this mandible, right? This is involved in its formation of uh, infratemporal fossa. These uh, five bones, and uh, with this, we quickly uh, have finished the uh, infratemporal fossa and all its uh, aspects are covered. Uh, thank you very much. And I request you to subscribe to my channel and uh, give it a um, thumbs up and uh, comment. do comment down below and uh, stay tuned and share with other uh, fellows. And we will very shortly come up with another lecture. Thank you very much. Bye.